Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa Sayyidi, me and my family would like to watch uh, Marvel movies and it's like the Green Lantern movie you recommended to us. Mm. Can we watch these movies like uh, uh, Iron Man, Superman or Marvel? What about it? If they can watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as a, as a sheikh, I, I'm not going to say this or that because then other sheikhs will say, oh, there's haram, there's like this, I don't know. There's world so, <laughs> so just follow your heart. If you feel that the scenes are okay, appropriate for your family, you have the ability to maybe if something's not appropriate, control it. But the main point, because we don't want to be endorsing because the, the Hollywood are not sponsoring our shows. So, <laughs> the, <laughs> so the main point in all of this and, and, and the hikmah, there must be hikmah in everything that Allah guides people sitting in the masjid, He guides people sitting on the street and He guides people sitting in their homes and, and through every medium there must be a hikmah in something. Whether you look at something completely fasiq and false and you, you look at how false it is, how bad it is and a'udhu billah that it's showing you how bad humans can be or you're looking at these technologies and sci-fi and, and or crime movies and you watch them and you, you see how this behavior is. Human behavior is visible and in the sci-fi movies the jinn are, are teaching these people. So it's good to watch it to see. At what level are they teaching these people? Because they want the jinn kingdom ruling earth. So they're not revealing it by accident, they're revealing it intentionally. They want people to be attracted by it. So then Mawlana would describe that awliya they don't use a spiritual power, make a deep connection. That's like firing a cannon when you could just pick up a paper. So in old days they would pick up the newspaper and say, what's happening in the news? Why you have to go through all your spiritual channels to be used and wasted for that? So they now can monitor the world by just watching TV. They, want, they monitor the news, so Mawlana was always the news, there was 10 different news channels from around the world he's watching. Or you can buy popular culture and, and many different mediums that they inspire so that you understand what's this technology they have, what these demons they have in these movies, what's this they're trying to subliminally push upon people. So no alhamdulillah there's, there's many hikmahs, that was the point of those whole discussions of movies, not to, to sort of endorse Hollywood and say everybody has to sit and watch these things, no. But there's a message in everything, Allah loves His creation, He's trying to reach to them in every medium and that's why Star Wars, Matrix. The Lord of the Rings, these were big awakening movies The many people saw it, saw there was a message in it and there must have been a higher purpose in life and so these movies became very popular with spiritual people and the spiritual people from all backgrounds. So it's not just Muslims, the Muslims most of them missed it because they were too much thinking, no this is you know this is haram, this is bad, this isn't but those whom caught it and they understood the spirituality of it then alhamdulillah they find that Allah has a, has a goal in everything. Take what's good and beneficial from you for it, take it, what's not good throw it, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the connection between the different surahs and Wahajik al Kareem, the holy face? Now I know where you're asking from that, alhamdulillah. It's funny because we, we sat with Arabs and the, the, the problem is that when something is so much a part of your, your language and your upbringing, you become desynthesized to language. So ajam, non-Arab, ajami like ourselves, every word is, is, is taught to us with a detail from its huruf to its potential understandings. So it's interesting we sat and asked that what, what, the, the, what is surah to, to some Arab people and they says, surah is chapter. I said, no it's not chapter, what is surah? And they said, face. 
So oh, that's interesting because we have 114 faces on the Qur'an. And they're like, what? Yeah, and they got upset. I said, no because you're, you, you have been conditioned to think that, you know, Kleenex means tissue. Because you were conditioned all your life, you heard this word that's what it means, you heard this word that's what it means. But to hear a word for the first time and be taught that that's not what it means. That's why ajami, that's why when Islam came the ajami nations brought out its realities, not the Arabs. There's not a distinction between Arabs and ajamis but this was the hikmah. The Arabs brought this immense reality. And then the ajams brought out all of its secrets because they had to learn the language. And they learned it without any of those predefined understandings. They would look at the huruf, keep repeating the huruf and the angel within the huruf would begin to expand it. So that's why the Khawjagan masters or all of Khurasan were bringing immense realities of Qur'an. So all their futuhats, Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's futuhats, uh, Al-Hamadani, Abu Hassan al-Qarqani, all, uh, all the muhaddis, all the books of hadith are in these areas. Means these realities were flourishing by ajami because they didn't have the predefined understanding. That was then the secret of how this Arabic would come. So this is now the second jahaliya that these words have been predefined for people. And they're stuck on that word. So we said before that when ajami read Rab, it doesn't mean Allah to them, it means Lord. But if in the school you were taught all your life, Rab is Allah, Rab is Allah, Rab is Allah, you lost all of its realities. And that's all shaitan wanted. So Rab is not Allah, Rab and any reference to Rab means lordly and lordly power. And that's why Surat Al Yusuf Alif Lam Ra is a coding that these secrets of Rabbaniya or Rububiya will be in this surah. And that's why when you read Surat Al Yusuf it's all about Sayyidina Yusuf talking about his Lord, his Lord who is his king, his job, his boss. And, and it's not about Allah, it's about Lordship and the secret of Lordship and in cultures the Rabb al-Shar was the lord of the town, Rabb al-Bayt was who's the lord of this house. This was the master of the house is called Rabb al-Bayt. When you came to the door of them, so who's a Rabb al-Bayt? And then the person will come, he's the master of the house. So these were, these are deep realities. So these are then lost until they're retranslated and then retaught back out to people. That's why Prophet described that Islam would rise from the west, the sun would rise from the west. The sun is what? Is the Muhammadan realities which we've been teaching. The Muhammadan reality which is the reality of the Kitabullah of the Qur'an and the reality of the Qur'an that has never been heard when Sayyidina Mahdi comes onto the earth will be re revealed upon this earth. But that reality would rise from the west and that the east already its knowledge set. You, you see they're dancing in, in those countries, they're, they're bringing uh, pop stars into the countries and having concerts but Maulid is forbidden. So it means already that region the sun has gone down on them. The, the sun rising from the west. The real reality of Islam would rise from the west. That the ajami and there's a shaykh al ajam who's in charge of all these shaykhs. And their responsibility is to teach the ajam because they're going to rise in numbers that can't be understood. Their, their, their screen is white, clean, nobody taught them anything. So when they hear these haqqaiqs and you teach them that Rabb, Rabb is Lordship and Rabb al Lord, you have the Lords that govern you and then the Lords of the heavens and the house of Lords. When they understood, they understand all of these realities means they go deep into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad because their realities are dressing them and giving them power. 
Imagine if you hear something and your mind says, no way, change the channel. You lost the ability for your marifah, your mind blocked your marifah. So why it would rise from the west? Because they're not been conditioned, they're a clean slate. What Allah wants to paint of realities will be painted so high and so fast, that's why these haqqaiqs are here. And they're not being broadcasted from Middle Eastern channels because those Middle Eastern channels would have killed the person talking. They're being broadcasted from the West. So Radio Free Islam is being broadcasted. You know BBC has Radio Free this, Radio Free… yeah Radio Free Islam is being broadcasted from these regions into the hearts of people around the world to prepare them for the arrival of the heavenly kingdom. And it's not what they think, it's all these different realities and Muhammadan realities that are essential to come, to absorb onto the heart and that they can go deeper and deeper into these haqqaiqs and into these realities inshaAllah. So Shaykh Al-Ajam, uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, if you read Qur'an transliteration and translation to understand the Qur'an, do you get the same sawab for reading the Arabic? Same sawab of reading the Arabic? <laughs> if you read the Arabic and it's easy for you to read for example, you have to do your awrat, so you recite Surat Yaseen and if you're able to read the Arabic, you read Surat Yaseen fast, alhamdulillah. The one whom doesn't know how to read and has to read with the transliteration, of course they get the sawab. And that's what this whole talk before your question was. Because the one whom Allah wants to teach, ittaqullah wa alimakumullah, if they have a taqwa, and they're in this school to, to learn, they'll go through transliteration and they'll say, Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and then they'll look, Ya Seen and then they'll, they'll think, well, what was Ya Seen? Why did they say Ya Seen? Well, well Qur'an and hakim and they're going so slow that every word they're looking up and by the hikmah of Qur'an, Allah swearing to Ya Seen by hikmah of Qur'an. So this is a code, this is something. So the one whom Allah slowed down their reading, they're actually way beyond the sawab that people can understand. So if they're meditating, contemplating, going slowly looking at each word, trying to understand what is it that they're saying that they can read fast for their awrat, but later on they come and go slow, they go each word, what, 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 what am I saying? And then Allah if there's a person who meditates and contemplates, Tanzilu Azizur Rahim. Well, you have to go word for word when you're ajam. Tanzil, Aziz, Rahim. So Sifat al Rahim is Tanzil. So Allah is saying in this surah that there's a power coming from Sifat al Rahim, as Tanzil means is always dressing. So then every word for them could be an opening within their heart because they're going slow. And that's the understanding of tafakkur, tafakkur and contemplation are those whom slow things down and they go at a slower pace, that's when they want to understand the Qur'an. There's reading Qur'an that you read from your etiquette, your adabs that you have to complete throughout the day and then there's trying to understand and go deep into the reality of Qur'an inshaAllah. That's what we're encouraging. Is you do the all right part, no problem, alhamdulillah, but to go deeper into it, that's why the surahs that we're mentioning and the different ayahs that Naqshbandiya has mentioned are meant for people to go back, read it and meditate on it. That, Ya Rabbi, this verse and this verse dress me from its understanding. So alhamdulillah. Again that's why for the rise from the west, there are going to be so many people come that will be reading it slow. <laughs> and all its haqqaiqs begin to dress them and bless them, inshaAllah. Who's my handkerchief?
Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Walaikum Assalam. Sayyidi, I lost my parents due to COVID. Can you please throw some light on this as I'm really struggling with this? InshaAllah Allah Azzawajal dress you and bless you and make it you on and that Alhamdulillah that Allah Azzawajal gave a station of uh, martyrdom that anybody whom dies within this difficulties and in these last days of plagues and sicknesses and pandemics, Alhamdulillah Allah grant for them the station of a martyr <laughs> and the station of a martyr that can't be achieved anymore because there's no battles is an immense, immense gift from Allah so that there's no hisab upon their account and that the lights and immense lights and dress and blessings would be dressing. And we said in many talks when we talk about the last days there are not too many people whom physically will succeed in being present with Sayyidina Mahdi They're They're not of that reality, they're not physically being trained, they don't want to physically be trained. So then there's a hikmah of last day calamities. Because what happens in these calamities when Prophet gave this secret of calamities that if you died of a sudden death and a calamity that Allah would grant you the station of a shaheed. So then imagine in the Muslim nation how many shaheeds are coming and what type of power Allah gives to them because they have no hisab and they're not held by any punishment and as a result they're believers. So they're asking Allah for more, hilman mazid that, Ya Rabbi we granted this shaheed means extremely powerful souls, grant us now more of realities. So these are the immense supporters for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi That's why we said that when you look to the Lord of the Rings, what happened when, when they were going to fight the evil forces? They went to the dead and said that, you want to receive the kingdom and your, your rank then help us means that there's an immense hikmah on that, that Allah is, is making these people to be shaheed. But shaheed for what? What power, they're giving them power for what in the last days? Because thousands and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands die in a tsunami and an earthquake and all sorts of difficulties are coming. But these lights they will be giving themselves for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi and they'll be fighting in the way of Sayyidina Mahdi for the unseen forces that are coming to fight. It's not the five or six human being that are going to do anything but it's the immensity of the unseen forces that will be giving their allegiance to Sayyidina Mahdi Every time a region in which these people are dying in large numbers there are awliyaullah present and initiating them to be in the way of Sayyidina Mahdi so there's a hikmah of everything. As I say, either you make it with your body, alhamdulillah, if you don't Allah take the body and He's going to make you to make it with your soul. So that's the hikmah of last days immense amounts of difficulty come and people appear to be perishing. And Allah says, don't look at them as something dead, they're very much alive. So don't worry inshaAllah. Keep doing your practices, keep the love of Sayyidina Mahdi the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and inshaAllah Allah dress them, bless them and they be a support for your home and for your families inshaAllah. Uh, as Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, what is the difference between sabr yeah. and victimhood? Who? <laughs> sabr and victimhood. Didn't we talk about this last week? All the same questions I did. Yeah, same question, same question. We, we talked about humble, be humble or being abused, we talked about that, alhamdulillah. InshaAllah you have to get the book, Timeless Reality. <laughs> so be humble and, and, and take down pride and bad character that comes with pride at the same time not to be abused by people, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't encourage abused by people. This just encourages that not to see myself in my actions. 
that whatever I do I know it's by the grace of God, it's by the grace of Allah by the rahmah of Allah And not to, to find a pride and, oh I'm smart, I'm intelligent, I'm this, I'm that, no I'm nothing. But Allah has endowed me with something of a wealth, of a mind, of a possession, of a skill, whatever it is and it's all from His rahmah. And at any time He can make me lose all my mind and give it to somebody else. So everything is, is very fluid and that by the grace of Allah that we're in existence. That's not about somebody beating somebody else and they take it, there's no abuse allowed, no harm allowed. This is about taking the pride in every action out, that don't find a pride in an action. And that's why you monitor yourself and what we have what we call wuquf qalb, be vigilant of your heart. If you're out somebody, out somewhere and all of a sudden you take out your beads and you just like Allah, Allah, Allah and you, f- you begin to sense, maybe people are looking at me now, put your beads away. Because you're now sharing your action, not for Allah but people are looking maybe thinking, oh this must be a really pious person. So every action, am I praying and people watching, am I praying too long in public? That's why these these other madha people come and say, you people pray very fast. Well it's out of the fear that if we start to pray too long, are we doing that to impress people? Because the long prayer and timely prayer is not when you have women, children and old people behind you, they're suffering. The, the timely prayer, long prayer is at home when nobody's watching you. That's when you pray fast to watch your next TV show. It's not pray fast at the mosque and, and make everybody slow down and, and keep going like you know, two miles an hour to show like you're so pious. So tariqah comes to say, look at all your actions and is pride entering my actions? Stop it, stop it. Go for wudu and don't come out all soaking wet so people look, oh my god this guy his wudu is like hammam, mashaAllah he's such clean guy. All his clothes wet, the bathroom is completely destroyed. You know, Sahabi, we're making wudu with a cup of water, you barely should come out with any water on you. It's because you take the water and just, just rub it. It's not about the water, it's about the intention. It's not about otherwise Allah would have ordered everybody, go take ghusl, go take your shower. So it means every action, am I doing it for, for people? And if people are looking and pride is entering, stop it, stop it and bring it down inshaAllah and efface yourself in front of other people. I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm no one, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa In an age where a lot of energy manipulation, if people are mm. always feeling fatigue, is this a byproduct of energy attack? and how to con- combat fatigue for a day and dunya and spirit? Yeah definitely that fatigue and, and energy we're all energy beings. So some people have a, an ability to zap other people's energies like vampire. They're just like a black hole, they take all your energy. So you have to be weary and, and, and cautious of situations like that and separate from that type of situation, make sure you have your wudu, make sure you have your taweez, make sure that you know you're you're looking down and not continuously staring into the eyes of somebody and and they're draining you. So you have to be conscious of everywhere you go and the the energy that you're picking up or giving out so that not to deplete your your battery and deplete your heart into nothing. So that's a vigilance on on our practices, (coughs) so no doubt that's… that is true to be careful of the energy, <coughs> to build it, to keep the protection of energy and to, to keep the associations that are positive. <coughs> Excuse me. As soon as you want to enter into an association of energy and you don't want to fall asleep in it, have a lot of strong tea or coffee because you're, you're coming into an energy association. If you're coming in sleepy, you're setting yourself up to be sleeping and uh, Grand Shaykh would throw something at anyone who slept in the association. That as soon as you sleep you curse the one to the right of you and to the left of you because it's a bad situation on, on the association. So they taught it that way. Now you can't do that anymore 
but they were pointing out the, the carelessness of sleeping. So that the Rijal in their training they know they're going to an energy event, go drink your coffee and tea and make sure it's a lot so that you're wide awake. And as soon as you're wide awake you're doing your practices to receive the most amount of fires and energy that you can. But if you're at home and you want to meditate and take a nap then that's up to you. But in the zikr and associations you have to do what's necessary to keep yourself awake. That's why sitting on your knees so that you have pain because it's hard to fall asleep when you're in pain unless you have arthritis then you can't do that at all. And then taking your tea and coffee and all your precautions because you know that situation is going to be intense energy and you don't want to go there and just sleep every time you go for zikr. Then it's like in the Snow White and the, the sleepy. Sayyidi, so if someone is sleeping next to us do we get up and walk away? Yeah, you throw your siwak on them, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. No, but you, you can tap them to wake up, it's not a bedtime here. Get up. Yeah. Sleep better at night and you know, take your precautions, take a nap before zikr and get ready to pound in. <laughs> get some sleep. <laughs> they put a sleeping guy if I'm sleeping. And then take your precautions and, and you know have your tea and everything because you know you're doing it. So yeah, alhamdulillah. That's why he said before Shaykh Dagestani, Mawlana Sultan Awliya Shaykh Abdul Faizid Dagestani, before Fajr was having 11 black teas in these little Turkish cups because he knows his Fajr is going to be Im immensely intense. So if you know that then you take your precautions inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, is there an adab when preparing or cooking meals? Yes inshaAllah to have your wudu and make sure that you're in wudu, salatul wudu and that when you're cooking to make your zikr or salawats upon the cooking so that it becomes blessed, it stays clean and has an immense blessing. Place salawats in the house if you're not going to make the salawats that you know you play some good nasheed, beautiful knot and uh, we have a YouTube playlist and you do your cooking with all this angelic reality and angelic support inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Could you please explain the reality of tears when we recite not Sharif? The reality of tears? Inshallah is the reality of ishq and muhabbat and love. That the soul knows the reality and the soul knows the reality of the heavenly kingdom in which it came from. The reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and in the love, the immense love for that reality. So every time it recites and the recitation when the soul becomes more and more sincere, more and more open with the power then it begins to make that connection. <coughs> as soon as they make that connection to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad it begins to cry because the nazar of Prophet is upon that soul. And then they're crying and their ishq and their love for Prophet that's why we say Rasul Kareem because the immense generosity of these nasheeds and salawats <coughs> as soon as you recite they, then the connection that they have, the nazar of Prophet comes upon them. We got a very bad heartburn, one second. <coughs> dresses them and blesses them and that's, that's, the, that's why then they have so many nasheeds about that, that as soon as you mention one time the name of Prophet tears come flowing to the eyes because the nazar of Prophet dresses them and begins to dress them and bless them and the soul knows that reality and that personality and it's, it's immense, immense blessings that it's receiving, alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam, the tariqah is based on, on adab and it's the shaykh's training by his example. So in, in the understanding of coming to the associations and in the character of the person 
that they come to the associations, they come showered, they come washed, they come with the clothes that are uh, for ibadah and worshipness and means that <coughs> everything about them is for their adab. They've been trained on, on the understanding, I have to wash on going to Allah I have to be in, in my attire that I don't use for dunya, that this attire of mine is, is for my akhirah. So when we change even out of the personality, even when you're at home, don't sit in your work clothes to, to mention Allah you try to leave it. They teach you even if you take karate you have to wear their karate suit. So it means enter back into the sunnah, into the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and say that, these are my clothes of worshipping as if you're taking it off and, and, and saying, I'm leaving the dunya and in this time I want to make my connection. So attiring the self, washing the self and then in the character and the personality of people make sure that your breath is always fresh. Make sure that you're clean and that you've perfumed yourself for the zikr, for the association. All of these are important. For some reason some people may do many acts of worshipness but they're very dirty and that doesn't flow with the tariqah, that doesn't flow in an ocean of hypocrisy. Means that what we call upon the outside and what we call upon the inside should be matching. So when I do my practices, I do my zikr, I'm cleansing myself, at all times I'm cleansing myself and I know that the angels are near me, they can smell me. So I always make sure that my breath is clean, that my, my breath and my, my demeanor is clean. I fragrance myself enough and for women it's a different rule because they shouldn't be smelled by people. But for a man he fragrance himself because the angels are coming, the unseen are coming. I have to make myself always presentable for the unseen as well as the, the seen. So if I take care of that reality to care for the unseen, the seen will fall into place. So then means I'm a clean person. I wash, I take care of myself, I groom myself and as a result of my grooming of myself my environment must always be clean, I'm a clean person. So can you imagine somebody's environment is like filthy and dir dirty and, and just like hoarding and things are all over the place? So that doesn't match with our character and that's where there's something wrong because this is a way of taking a hisab that you do all your practices but why your home looks like that, why your room looks like that, why you know anything around you would look dirty and unorganized. So the, the character is reaches perfection when the in and out is, is perfected. Everything around them is clean, the inside is clean, the outside is clean, they, they, they take an immense precaution in making themselves always to be sort of taken care of and, and clean because they represent the unseen and the seen. So if, if your house is a, is a mess, the unseen are the ones complaining to the shaykh that, where is this person we have to live with them? Look at this, look at what is like this because they're living there. And anything that becomes messy and dirty more nefarious energies are entering. So because our life is clean then those beings are much more happier. So when we opened our center, everybody who has a halal market is the most filthiest market you can enter into. How is that possible? With Islam and its realities of wudu and being clean, remember we're going around and everywhere we went there were the dirtiest markets you could imagine and people were so scared to come to our center because it was so clean. So what did they do here? So what do you know what to do? As we wash our body, the floor of this center, you have to be able to eat on it. It has to be washed. I like the smell of pine salt, I want to smell it to be clean just like I want to smell myself to be clean. Everything has to match what we do. 
So there is no hypocrisy. And that's the thing that, so when you see the shaykh is, is, is you know, is the, keeping the floors spotless, the aisles to be clean, the center to be perfumed, the carpets. He said, we would go into a masjid, you make sujood, you could smell brioni and, and curry because people were just breathing into the carpets. It was just, it, that's not Islam. Islam was about cleanliness. So when you breathe into our carpets, you should be smelling the rose oil that they spray and they put all around. Why? So that the experience is within us and outside of us is consistent. And uh, that's always a reminder for myself, keep your home clean, keep your environment clean, no clutter, no boxes, no, no, no dirtiness and it should symbolize your state and your station, that you're somebody who's clean and organized inshaAllah. Otherwise we keep a face to people and then we're somebody else inside and that's what we're trying to avoid. <laughs> If we start a 40 day effort to overcome a bad character and fail in the middle of it, should we restart or continue finishing the 40 days? No, restart. It's 40 days is 40 days. So if you only went 10 days and got angry then you have to start again for 40 days of no anger, inshaAllah. <coughs> إلى شيخ النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن أصحاب الكرام ولا مشايخنا في طريقة نشبندية العلية وسائر وسادتنا وصدقنا الفاتحة